Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, let's make the Puerto Rican version of the classic Latin American stew called Sancocho. For those that don't know, Sancocho is a stew that's made up of beef, sometimes other meats, and a variety of exotic root vegetables. It's super delicious, hearty, comforting, perfect for this chilly fall weather or a rainy day. So let's get into it. All right, and jumping right into it, I have here a pound and a half of beef and I cut it up into some pretty chunky pieces and for reference this is chuck roast I love chuck roast for beef stew because it's so flavorful and tender you can see all that marbling of the fat that's what gives it really good flavor however if you want the leaner kind of beef I suggest using like sirloin beef it's still going to give you good flavor um, and be a little leaner so I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and I'm gonna go ahead and add my spices. Here I'm adding about, I say like half a teaspoon to three quarters of a teaspoon of my Lori's Casero all-purpose seasoning. Of course, you can use adobo or any other garlic-based all-purpose seasoning. Gonna give that a good mix with my spoon. And I wanna make sure that my beef is nice and flavorful because I am going to be searing this beef for max flavor. And adding the spices is gonna help dry out the outside of the meat. You can see in the background my caldero, it is heating up. I have it set over high heat. For me, that's about the number, like a six and a half on my electric stove. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some onion powder. Give it a good mix. And I am pretty good to go. Let's start searing this beef. All right, so like I mentioned, I have my very large caldero here. It is set over high heat. I like to wet my hands and splash some water. And once I see the water dancing around the bottom of the caldero, that's how I know it's nice and hot. And then I'm gonna coat the bottom of my caldero with a little bit of olive oil. And I'm gonna go ahead and sear my beef on all sides until it's nice and golden brown and a nice crust forms. So while this step is not necessary, I know a lot of people that don't do this, but for me, I find that it's gonna give the max flavor on our sancocho. This is going to really help enhance that beef flavor. As you can see, a nice crust started to form. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm only gonna sear the top and the bottom of the beef. I'm not gonna do it on all sides cause that's gonna be a little too tedious, but if you want to do so, you may. And I'm gonna do this in batches without overcrowding my caldero because once you overcrowd the caldero with beef, instead of searing, it's going to steam and that's not what we want. You're not gonna get that nice sear. And being the good Puerto Rican that I am, I cannot make the sancocho without adding some ham. So I am using some smoked brown sugar ham that I found at Walmart. Now, I made the mistake of buying the spiralized ham, but it's okay, it's gonna work out and it's still gonna taste delicious. However, I highly suggest getting ham that you cut yourself into chunks. That's gonna be really nice if you want like those nice meaty, chunky pieces of ham um, and you can get it either with the bone in or without the bone but be mindful that if you do get it with the bone it's going to enhance the flavor even further so i'm just going to saute this up until it's nice and golden brown and pardon the angle here <laughs> i my camera must have moved but i'm just gonna go ahead and remove my ham that has been nice and seared and i'm gonna set it to the side and then i'm gonna begin to create the base of my sancocho
And now I'm gonna add a little bit more oil since most of it has dried out. And I'm gonna add some sofrito. Here I'm adding about two ounces of sofrito. That is equivalent to about two tablespoons, like two heaping tablespoons of sofrito. And by the way, I do have two videos on my channel on how to make sofrito. I have a practical version, which is simple and it's good for those who don't have access to certain ingredients and i have a traditional authentic version i'm going to go ahead and add about a little over a can of tomato sauce so about six ounces in one small can of tomato sauce there's eight ounces so you're going to add six ounces of that tomato sauce i'm then going to add five smashed garlic cloves two bay leaves, half of a green pepper, you can use any pepper you like, then I'm going to go ahead and give that a good stir until it's nice and fragrant and the garlic is soft but not overcooked. So you want to make sure that you're working pretty quickly. So after my sofrito base is nice and well combined and fragrant, I'm gonna go ahead and add that beef from earlier along with its drippings because that's going to add flavor. And I'm also gonna add the ham that I sauteed earlier as well. And by the way, my heat is still set over high heat. I'm just going to go ahead and stir that to combine. Next, I'm going to add enough water to not only cover all of my ingredients that I have so far in this pot, but a little extra because I wanna make sure that all of my root vegetables that I'm gonna be adding later on fit. So make sure you add a generous amount of water. I wanna say until about three quarters of your caldero is full. And you wanna make sure that you're using a pretty deep and large pot. Um, you will see later why. <laughs> Now I'm gonna add one packet of sasong and one packet of beef bujan. You can also add a pack and a half of sasong if you prefer, but I'd say one is pretty good. I'm gonna give that a really good stir. And once all of this comes to a boil, I'm gonna put my lid, I'm gonna leave a little gap on my lid so that it doesn't overflow. And then I'm gonna set my heat to about medium low. And I'm gonna let this braise for about two hours until my meat is nice and tender. All right, so while my meat is boiling, I wanna show you everything that's gonna go in later on. I'm gonna be adding one yuca root. This is also called cassava in English. I'm also going to add one medium-ish <laughs> ñame. I believe that ñame in English is called taro root. I'm gonna add a little bit of butternut squash, some corn that I'm going to chop up in about thirds, three small potatoes. I have here some carrots that I'm going to peel and chop and two green plantains, but you can also use green banana. All right, so I went ahead and peeled and chopped all of my veggies. And yeah, I chopped them up in pretty big chunky pieces, but you can chop them up however, whichever size you like. And I'm gonna let them soak in cold salted water while my beef boils, just to prevent my vegetables from browning. I also then went ahead and I chopped up my corn. I chopped them up into thirds, but you can chop them in halves if you like. 
These cook pretty quickly, which are really nice, and they're gonna add a really good flavor. And remember, all of the ingredients will be listed in the description box below. All right, so my beef has been boiling for about two hours. If you think that's a long time, remember for something extremely delicious, it's a labor of love and it's gonna take some patience, so it's all good. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and add all these root vegetables in my caldero, and as you can see, at this point, <laughs> I was like, oh no, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> I did not have a bigger pot than this. That's why I say make sure you're using like a really deep pot, like a preferably like a stock pot or an even larger caldero than I have. But it's okay because it all worked out, y'all. It all worked out. So I added <laughs> all of my veggies and I even added like a little bit more water. And yeah, it was good to go. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good mix and make sure that they are nicely submerged in the broth and I'm going to boil them for an additional half an hour just until all of these veggies are nice and tender. And as I said, it all worked out. It came out amazing so rich and delicious that beef was so tender you can cut it with a plastic spoon the veggies were nice and soft it came out amazing and just a trick if you want a thicker broth you can always remove a couple of the root veggies smash them in a bowl add them back into your pot give it a good mix and let it boil for five minutes so it can get even thicker but it was good for me and once I was done I went ahead and topped it with some fresh chopped cilantro and to enjoy the sancocho I will be pairing it with some white rice which is customary for Puerto Ricans and I have a perfect delicious hearty meal and as always if you've enjoyed today's video please give it a thumbs up hit that notification bell and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you next time bye